LTV, TAC, MRR, ARR, LCR, LVR, so many different kind of acronyms in B2B SaaS that it can be overwhelming for anybody trying to build a business. Now, as you as the founder or somebody working in sales, you have to know which one should I track, which one shouldn't I track, which one's more important to me, and how do I stay focused? And that's exactly what we'll cover in today's videos. We want to talk about what are the top sales metrics in B2B SaaS that you must measure to be able to continue to know where to grow and where to focus your time and effort. Now, this goes for all sales metrics. This is a super important point. If you're not tracking, you'll never know what the problem is and you'll never know where to improve. So as I was saying, if it doesn't get measured, it doesn't get managed. And that's exactly why you need to measure all these key metrics so you know exactly where to manage your time and manage your effort. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video here at SaaS District. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the top five sales metrics that you must measure and if you're in B2B SaaS. Okay, my name is Akhil Jabbar. I'm the investment director and GP at Horizon Capital, where we work with dozens of different SaaS companies and help them grow. And one of the key fundamental areas that keeps us, that we set up with every single company we work with is setting up metrics, KPIs, OKRs, and all these metrics and measurements and reporting that makes it super important for us when we're managing a bunch of companies so we know what's working well, where to focus our energy, where to improve, and how to continue to scale. Okay, if you're not measuring it, like I said, you're not managing it properly. Um, so there's a couple of areas where we, we focus on that we love to focus on and look at every single week. Okay, if you're setting up your metrics, you probably wanna look on this at minimum on a weekly, if not daily basis. So you know what's working, what's not working, and where to adjust your strategy and where you need to focus your effort. So number one, MRR, or monthly recurring revenue. Or you can also use ARR, which is your annual recurring revenue. Now that's, that's exactly what it is, is what is your monthly recurring revenue from customers that are paying you on a monthly basis? Okay, so if you, you're, pay, you're charging, let's say, $99 a month for your product, and you have 100 users who are paying you at that rate, that $99 a month, you know that you're making you know, $9,999 every single month. So that's your MRR. And that's a super important metric that you want to track on a monthly basis. And then you know, ARR is just what is that annualized so that when you're reporting to investors or you're looking to uh, you know, just report it to people on your team, um, a lot of people ask what is your ARR in terms of determining what the value of your company is. So that's, that's super, super easy, but super important to measure. Know how many customers you have and how much are they paying you on a monthly basis. Super straightforward. Number two, what is your customer churn? Okay, churn, if you guys don't know what that is, that's a super important point that every single person is gonna ask you when they ask about your business is, how many customers are leaving at the end of the month? Okay, so if I onboard you know, 10 new, new users to my platform and five are leaving, so you're saying that you know, at the end of the month, five are leaving out of 100, so that's 5%. Okay, so if we use that same 100 customer ratio and five are leaving, so your churn rate will be 5%. You have to pay attention to that value and you wanna make sure to keep it as low as possible because that's gonna show how valuable your product is and um, you know, where, where you need to improve your product. If your churn is high, you've gotta really think, you know, there's a whole kind of video I've done in the past where you know, how to reduce churn, where to focus on churn. You might wanna check out those videos, but churn is, is probably one of the most important points that I would say in this whole video. If you focus on churn, you know, everything else uh, becomes easy. A number that you want to try to aim for is generally you want to stay under, you know, single digits. If you can stay under 2%, 3% churn, that's kind of the upper bound you want to be, uh, then you're probably in a good position. Some people actually move towards positive churn. So if you guys don't know how positive churn works is basically you're keeping all your customers happy. And then on top of that, you're upselling them and expanding and adding more value and adding more revenue with your existing customers. And if you're, if you're doing, you know, positive churn, you're in a super healthy position and you should be able to continue to grow your revenues. So that's number two, customer churn. Number three, LTV, and that's your lifetime value. Your LTV is, what is the value of one of your customers? What is the average value of one of your customers, okay? This is directly tied back to your churn. How often are these customers churning and canceling? So let's take an example of what we talked about earlier. You're charging $99 a month 
and you have 100 users, okay? If all, you know, on average, most of those users stick around for one year, okay? If they're leaving on average every 12 months and then you're getting new ones, and then the other ones stay for 12 months on average, so your LTV would be 12 months times $99. So you just multiply that, your LTV becomes, you know, it's called almost $1,200. Okay, so your LTV is another important metric you wanna uh, measure. If you're using Stripe, Bear Metrics, or ProfitWell, you should be able to see that and connect it to see what your LTV value is every single week. So obviously the higher the LTV value, the lower your churn, the more valuable your, your, uh, your business is, your MRR increases, and you can see the whole picture is all tied, how it's all tied together. Number four, your CAC, your cost per acquisition. How much does it cost you to get one of those users? Okay, and this is important. Most people say, okay, look, it's costing me $500 to get a user, but I'm only making $99 a month. But that's fine. There is no issue with paying $500 to get $99 a month. But what's more important is how much LTV is that cost per acquisition costing you? So if you're spending, let's say $500 on uh, Facebook ads, for example, okay, and that'll get you, you know, if you do it over and over again, you spend $5,000, it'll get you 10 users and it's predictable and you're seeing that on a month to month basis. As long as your LTV to CAC ratio is, is you know, higher than three is generally a rule of thumb, then you know when you're, you're in a good position. So you wanna keep your CAC per acquisition obviously lower than your lifetime value. So if it's costing you $500, like we talked about, and your LTV is $1,200, so that ends up being, you know, the LTV to CAC ratio is about two, just over two and a bit, right? So it's, it's not bad, you can see, okay, maybe we can try to optimize it, measure it every single week. Is it going up? Uh, you know, let's say this week it costs us 400, maybe next week you can drop it, how you can reduce it to 300, maybe you need to do more optimization on your ads, do more experimentation, test different ad sets, different images, different copy, different uh, audiences. So that's where you kind of know where to focus. So if you know your CAC is really high, where are your leads, where are your customers coming from, you can figure out how to optimize that cost to reduce it and, and increase that LTV to CAC ratio to get it to above three. And that's where it becomes more attractive. Last but not least, number five, I'll say your lead velocity rate or your lead closing rate. And what I mean by that is lead velocity rate is how many new leads are you adding every single month, okay? If you're spending, you know, back to the CAC ratio, if you're spending, you know, $500 and you're getting 10 users, okay? Or sorry, 10, you're getting 10 leads. So each of those leads are costing you $50, right? So you have 10 leads and you're getting them, let's say every single month. Um, how many of those are you closing? Your lead closing rate. So if you get 10, your lead closing rate is gonna be 10%, right? So for every 10 leads you get, you know you're gonna close one, that's 10%, and that's gonna cost you $500. And then you can see how it's all tied back together. So measure how many leads you're getting every week, how many of those are actually being closed, how, many, how much is that costing you, how much is that leading to your LTV? How much is that leading you know, to how many of those are actually churning? And then back to the top, what does that become you know, in the big picture of the overall business? What is your MRR and ARR? So you can see it starts with leads, you know, your cost, your closing rate, your LTV, your churn, your MRR. So those are the top five I would recommend. You guys have to measure today. Set up a simple spreadsheet, track it every single week, and know where to focus your, your time and effort when it comes to B2B SaaS. So hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video and comment below. Let me know which sales metric are you currently tracking that I haven't mentioned? Uh, what is most important to your business right now? Is there any other metric that you're focusing on and that you're looking to improve? Let me know and maybe we can give you guys some tips on how to improve that as well. All right guys, thanks again and see you guys on the next video.